For chapter 7, we're going to be looking at exp uh, rational expressions, which is another way for saying fractions. We're going to be looking at fractions. Chapter 6, we saw polynomials, so more likely we're going to be looking at fractions of polynomials. To begin with, we're going to give you a value for x, or value for the variable, and ask you to substitute it into an expression. So let me go for example a. Instead of x, I'm going to use 1. So I have 3 times 1 plus 6 over 2 times 1 minus 4. Technically, on the top, I have 3 plus 6, right? Because 3 times 1 is 3. So I have 3 plus 6, so I have a 9. At the bottom, I have 2 minus 4, so that's a negative 2. 9 over negative 2, at least bring the negative to the front, and I'm going to call this negative 9 over 2. Same thing for example B. I'm going to do 3 times 0 plus 6 over 2 times 0 minus 4. Basically, I have 0 plus 6 on the top and 0 minus 4 at the bottom, right? I'm doing the multiplications. 0 plus 6 on the top is 6. 0 minus 4 at the bottom is negative 4. Once again, do bring the negative sign to the front. And in this case, simplify the fraction. So I'm going to be a negative, but 6 over 4, I'm going to call it 3 over 2. So negative 3 over 2. Now let's take a look at some special cases like sample C. My x is 2, so I have 3 times 2 plus 6 over 2 times 2 minus 4. Basically on the top I have 6 plus 6, and at the bottom I have 4 minus 4. That gives me 12 over 0. Whenever we have a zero at the bottom, and the top is not zero, but the bottom is zero, we're going to call this undefined. Now, looking at example D, my x is negative 2, so I have 3 times a negative 2 plus 6. At the bottom, I have 2 times negative 2 minus 4. So I have negative 6 plus 6 on top, and at the bottom I have negative 4 minus 4. Basically, I have 0 over negative 8. Now here, the 0 is on the top, not at the bottom, just on the top. So whenever we have a 0 on the top, we're going to say our fraction simplifies to 0. Now, these two cases are going to be very important later on. We're going to call them asymptotes, and they're going to be important once we learn how to graph polynomials. But the one thing too is a fraction, zero over zero, that's going to be more in detail once we, we take calculus one. If we ask Siri, that Siri doesn't even know what zero divided by zero is. But on our fractions, if only the zeros on the top, not the bottom, my equation is zero, my expression is zero. If the zeros at the bottom, not on the top, my expression is undefined. Now, for the next slide, it's asking me, when is this expression undefined? Find the values of the variable for which each rational expression is undefined. That means, when is the bottom equal to 0? So, for example, 8, I'm going to be thinking, when is 3x plus 2 equal to 0? Let me subtract 2 on each side. So, that means that 3x equals negative 2. Let me divide both sides by 3. So, x is equal to negative 2 over 3. That is when my x is equal to 0. Now, looking at example B, once again, I'm asking myself, when is m squared plus 5m plus 6 is equal to 0? When is the bottom equal to 0? We learned how to factor it in chapter 6, so I'm going to call this m minus 2 times n minus 3 equal to 0, right? I factor the polynomial. Now, remember that when my factors are equal to 0, I have to let each of my factors equal to 0. So I have to go m minus 2 equals 0. When is m minus 3 equal to 0? My first one, add 2 to both sides, m is equal to 2. The second one, add 3 to both sides, m is equal to 3. So for example B, I have two solutions. Those are the values of m that will make the bottom equal to 0, which makes the expression undefined. Now, looking at example C, I'm looking at when is r squared plus 1 equal to 0? 
Let me subtract the one on each side. So r squared is equal to negative one. Let me get the square root of each side. So r is the positive or negative square root of negative one. At this moment, we don't know how to get the square root of, root of, of a negative. So I'm just gonna say no solution. That means the bottom will never be zero. So this, this expression will never be undefined. Now, the way we're going to simplify fraction is by using factors. 30, the number 30, I'm going to split it at a 6 times 5. Number 72, I'm going to write split it as 6 times 12. So I'm going to split it as two factors. I'm going to cancel the common factor, so the 6 is in this case, and my fraction will be simplified to 5 over 12. Same thing for example B. 14k squared, I can do that as 7 times 2 times k times k. All right, I'm going to split my letters as well. The bottom, I have a 2 times k times k times k. I cancel the 2s because those are common factors. I cancel the k's and the other k's. My, what I have left over it is a 7 over k. In this case, I'm going to do the exact same thing. 3x minus 12, just looking at the top, I can factor a 3 out. So I have x minus 4. At the bottom, let me factor a 5 out. So inside parentheses, I'm going to have x minus 4. I cancel the common factors, and I'm going to have 3 over 5. Looking at example B, looking on the top, Technically, I could factor a 2 out, so I'm going to have y squared minus 4. But then I look at the parentheses, y squared minus 4. That looks like the difference of the squares. So I have the 2 out to begin with. I'm going to leave that outside. But my parentheses, I'm going to do y minus 2, y plus 2, because I was looking at the difference of the squares. Now, looking at the bottom, let me factor a 2 out. And I'm going to have y plus 2. Cancel the common factors, those 2s, the y plus 2 with the y plus 2. And in this case, I have left over y minus 2. Once again, split it into factors, cancel the common factors. And whatever you have left over, that's, that, that is your expression in lowest terms. Now, this one right here it is beautiful. When we have a minus in between and the terms x and y are swapped. Right, let me factor a negative 1 on the top. This is going to be a cool thing. Let me factor a negative 1. You guys are going to see why I factor a negative 1. So if I factor a negative 1 on the top, that gives me a negative x plus y. Once again, I'm just looking at the top. Inside of the parentheses, because it's addition, and I remember the commutative property, I can move the order of the values. I'm just going to rearrange the order. So I have a negative 1 on the front. But on the inside, I have y minus x. I rearranged the order. Now, looking at the bottom, let me just copy the y minus x that I have at the bottom to begin with. Cancel the common denominator or common factors, and my answer will be negative 1. When you have an expression with a minus in between and the two letters are swapped, that is equal to negative 1. Beautiful. Now, how to write this in four equivalent forms? To begin with, I see a negative on the front. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to give it to the top. I'm not going to work anything out. I'm just going to say there's a negative, and I'm going to put everything inside parentheses on the top. The bottom, I'm going to leave it alone. That is one way of writing it. The second way of writing it is, on the top, distribute the negative to get rid of parentheses. So I have negative 3x minus 2 over x minus 6. I have a second way of writing this. Now, starting with the initial expression, my negative, in this case, let me bring it to the bottom. So the top, I'm going to leave it alone. At the bottom, I have a negative x minus 6. And to finish this, the fourth way, let me distribute the negative at the bottom. So I have 3x plus 2 over 